Everybody knows that if you're a baseball player, especially a pitcher, then you should automatically have an incredible serve in tennis, right? Well, unfortunately, that's not true. And today we're gonna to look at a case study of one of my recent students that proves that point. And you're gonna learn a lot about creating power on your serve, as well as the learning process and some, some big misconceptions out there about being good at tennis. So here's our student. And I, I want you to notice as he goes into his trophy pose here, watch how much his racket drops before his body starts to turn. So what I really want you to pay attention to here is his chest and also his hips and watch for when they start to turn forwards. The racket's dropping, his body's not doing anything yet, still not doing anything, still not doing anything. And right about here, his body just starts to turn forwards. Look at how much, look at how much movement his arm and his racket have, have gone through to get to this point. He's basically all the way at the bottom of what his racket drop is before there's any movement of his, the big parts of his body at all. And if you know anything about tennis or sports in general, you know that the big, powerful, strong, stable parts of the body should be the main power source of all of your strokes. And the arm, the hand, the shoulder should be much more passive. They're involved, of course, in accelerating the racket, but they're very secondary. They should be secondary. Otherwise, things get really rigid and tight and tense. So what we have here is the cart before the horse. The arm and the hand are moving a lot and very early before the body really does anything to start driving upwards and turning forwards into contact. Early drop and then the turn of the body. Now, here's the weird part. This student that we worked with, amazing athlete, super coordinated, very strong, and he was the star pitcher of his baseball team in high school. So we asked him, hey, can you throw a ball for us? And here's what it looked like. So check this out. Here's him winding up for the pitch. And I want you to notice this same thing. Remember how we were watching his chest and we were watching his hips on his original serve? Watch when they start to move relative to his arm. They're already turning. Has his arm started to drop yet or fall? No, it hasn't. And so what's happening here is the big, strong parts of his body are leading and his arm is following. So when he gets into his stretched position with his shoulder right here, his body has already gone through a lot of rotation. And so that's building up this lag or this stretch in the shoulder that he can then release and snap through the, the release of the ball. And so you can see he's a, he's a great athlete, obviously. Like he, he knows how to throw a ball and he's able to throw a ball super strongly. So why didn't that automatically translate into his serve? Well, who knows for sure exactly what happened. Somewhere along the line, when he put a racket in his hand, he lost that natural fluid ability to use the big parts of his body and to keep his arm relaxed, which he can clearly do with a ball in his hand. But with a racket, his arm started taking over too soon. And so he was going all the way down into his racket drop before his body did anything. So after working on it, here's what his serve started to look like. Just kidding, this is Novak Djokovic. I wanted to show this to you first. Watch his chest and watch his hips relative to the drop of his racket. And watch how his chest is leading the way in the swing right as his racket starts to fall. So he's not waiting for his racket to fall first before his chest turns forwards. They're happening simultaneously. And so he's starting to push and drive and rotate right at the same time his racket's starting to fall. And I would submit to you the idea or the concept or the theory that this motion, this dropping of the racket into a, a racket drop position is much more of a passive movement than what most players make it. I think most players, they know about the racket drop. They know they're supposed to get the racket head down. And so their arm ends up kind of doing a lot of the work which results in a lot of tightness, a lot of tension, and a lot of arm movement unsupported by the body, which just leads to a very unathletic movement and very little power as a result. When the body leads the way and the arm follows, re relaxed and loose and passively, then we can get a lot of fluidity and smoothness and generate a lot of racket head speed very effortlessly. So here's our student again after working on it. Notice how now his racket hand is lagging behind a little bit longer. He's holding his hand 
down a little bit longer than he was before. This is a little bit more like a, a Roger Federer uh, style where the, the, the racket hand is behind in the motion a little bit more than you know hands up together. It's kind of the old school uh, way of teaching the serve. So now his hand isn't getting up as early in the whole motion and that means his body can start to lead. So look at how now his chest is rotating and that's what's initiating the motion. And he's getting a deeper, more athletic racket drop now because his arm and his hand are much more passive than they were before. And that's because the body's doing its job and it's leading the way. So now we've got more range of motion, a deeper drop, more active powering of the, the stroke with the body. And he started hitting really big shots with very minimal effort when he made this change. And he stopped leading the way with the arm. So what can we learn from this case study? Well, number one, just because you're already skilled and a good athlete in one sport doesn't mean you're automatically gonna be good at tennis. It also means that you can't just tell somebody, oh, it's just like throwing a ball and automatically have them be a great server, for example. Those kind of comparisons a lot of times can be a shortcut for tennis players in learning the game of tennis, but not always. Here we have a great pitcher that had a big flaw in his serve. And number two, what we've learned is that allowing the body to lead any swing in tennis, but especially a big, powerful one like the serve, it's critical. If your arm starts taking over, you'll lose power, you'll lose efficiency, your results won't be as good. Hopefully this has been super helpful. If so, do me a favor and click the like button. Every like on the channel, by the way, donates a penny to the Milwaukee Tennis Education Foundation. So thank you so much for supporting us, for supporting them, and I'll catch you in the next video.